guys, this is Ms. Miller, your Photo One teacher. This part of the semester, we're going to start working in Photoshop and learning how this amazing digital imaging software program works. We're going to be using um, some of the images that you've taken for earlier projects um, in this class, so I would like you to be using your own pictures. We're going to be doing something called a scribble today. Um, I've shown you guys the the end product. I printed out a hard copy for you guys to look at so you do know what the end result is. What I'd like you to do is to select one of your images that you think would look good with this particular technique. Um, I think figures look really good, um, faces, uh, something you know recognizable. And um, open up your image um, and I would like you to resize it. We don't need to have it um, a, a, as a huge file. It, it takes longer for some of these adjustments to take effect if, if the image if the file is too big. So the first thing I want you to do is to resize whatever image you're choosing. That's my dog. Hold on a second. Sorry about that. I have three dogs, so they periodically might bark throughout this tutorial. So you should know how to resize an image. So image, image size, and um, do something small like eight by ten or you know close to that size paper. So I'm going to just change my image to eight and change the resolution. You don't need well um, for our purposes. Let's just do 150. Um, it'll be easier. And then hit OK to resize the image. Now sometimes when you resize things, you guys freak out a little bit. You're like, oh, it's so small or so big. It's it's not changing. This isn't the actual size of our picture. It's just um, the percentage that it's um, showing. So it's only like 22% is the view. To change the view, you can go to view and um, fit on screen to get your image back to normal. And then you can zoom in and out of your image. Um, and that's something that you want to probably do with this tutorial. So here's the magnifying glass. So you can kind of zoom in as needed. Um, to zoom out, I usually just go to view and then zoom out. And sometimes if you like zoom out too much or you zoom in too much, sometimes it gets a little crazy and you're like, whoa. Just again, just go to view and fit on screen um, and get it back to normal. So we are going to be using your toolbar. Um, we're going to be using some new tools. We're going to be using some new selection tools. Um, again, the toolbar can be adjusted. It can, if you click on this little arrow here, you can make it two columns. Um, if you click the double arrows again, you can make it one column. And whenever you select a tool, um, what it does is it highlights it up here in this top bar and it's called a tool option bar and it, it's letting you know that that's the tool you have selected and then depending on what tools you select um, you can you can make the tool act in different ways and do different things depending on what your what your aesthetic is and um, again the toolbox if you want to know what a tool is called if you just hold your pointer over the, the box or the arrow, it should come up. It will tell you, like, this is the eyedropper tool. There are also more tools um, hidden. So all the tools that are visible, there's a lot more. So if you click on the arrow in the corner, um, you'll see other hidden tools. So if you're looking for a tool and it's not visible, it's probably hidden, and you might have to kind of look around for it. Um, over here, we're going to be working with layers. Um, layers are a very important element with Photoshop. Um, you want to think of layers as like different layers of your photo, like acetate, like clear acetate um, stacked on top of each other. And so you can make adjustments on these different layers. And then if you don't like what you did, you can get rid of the layer. Um, and so it makes um, working with a photo a lot easier and, and doing adjustments and digital manipulation because if you mess up you can delete a layer you can kind of go back and, and see what your image looked like originally so I think it's really cool so make sure you have um, that it says layers over here and that that's what's activated and your first layer just says background because we haven't 
added any layers yet, but we will. So the first thing we want to do is we're, we're going to select the figure and we're going to end up moving it into a different background. There are different selection tools. We've used the magic wand. It looks like a little magic wand. Um, the quick selection tool is nice and this one, if you have a busy background, the quick selection tool might be your best bet. So select that and again it highlights it up here in the tool option bar and depending on what you're trying to resize, I mean trying to select, um, you might need to change the size of the radius of it, of your quick selection tool. So if you click on this little number here with the circle over it, um, you can adjust the size, which I'm going to do. Okay, and then you just click. So you can already see it started to select. Um, I'm going to start over. So I have my selection tool. What you do is sort of drag it. You hold, you know, you hold your mouse key down. You, you click and hold, and then you just kind of drag it around the figures, and it hopefully will not go out of the outline too much. If it does, um, I'll show you what to do to bring it back in, or if it, you know, if it selects too much or too little. There are little adjustments um, that you can make. And again, don't get frustrated. Selection tools are a little tricky and, you know, you're trying to essentially outline something with a mouse, um, but you'll get the hang of it. So you can kind of see where I've um, selected too much. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see. So I really want to refine that outline. So if I go up here to my tool option bar, you'll see that there's the the quick selection tool, there's a plus and minus, so if I use the minus, I can sort of push, oh, I still have the magnifying glass selected, oops. So that's something else, make sure you're, you know, you have the right, sometimes it's easy to go back and forth between tools and, and think you're in a tool and it's not working the way you want. So make sure the quick selection tool is selected, I hit the minus, and so, I'll just kind of take that little circle and push it, and it's kind of pushing it back, you know, and sort of wrapping around the arm of the figure I'm trying to select. And so, again, it takes a little bit of patience. Um, if you want to add to the selection, you do the plus. You go up to the tool option bar, and you hit plus. And you just, again, just kind of you know, move in the area that you want to select. And let's see. And then we're going to refine it using our eraser tool. Let's see. But anyway, you can, you know, take as much time as you need. Um, to refine it. And again, it doesn't have to be super perfect because the effect is going to be a, sort of a, a, a drawing, so the edges aren't really that um, super important. Okay. Okay. So I actually paused and, and refined my selection a little bit more. So again, it, it does take a little bit of time, so try not to get too frustrated. The next thing we're going to do is we'll first go to view if you enlarged your image and hit fit on screen. Oops. And um, we're going to create a new layer. So I want you to pay attention to this area of Photoshop. Um, this is our original picture. It's just a background, but we're going to end up sort of creating a layer with just this figure in it, the selection that we, we made. So what you want to do is go up to the very top menu bar up here. You're going to select layer and then you're going to select new and then you're going to go over to the next context menu and select layer via copy. And you click on that and so, again, I want to draw your attention over here to the layer. So now we have two layers. We have the background, the original image, and now we have a layer with just our figure that we selected. Okay, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, 
And just to also point out, there are little eyes next to these layers, so you can hide a layer. To, again, to sort of, you know, this won't do much of anything, but, you know, just to show you what we did. So we basically selected that figure and, and put it in its own layer and copied it into its own layer. Now, one nice thing is that we can refine our selection a little bit more here. If you hide the background layer, um, there's an eraser tool. Um, again, it highlights it up here in the, the tool option bar. Adjust the size, and then you can, if you want, if you got a little too much, you can also sort of erase because I had, oops, I did it a little too much. If you did it a little too much or did make, made a mistake, just go to edit, step backwards, and that's why it's better to kind of do little strokes. You might, again, want to magnify, oops. If you hit the Alt key, it will change it back and forth to plus and minus to see what you're doing. And again, the eraser tool looks like a little eraser, and you can adjust the size of it. And again, this is just, you know, something that you, you just kind of have to take your time doing. So again, I'm going to pause this, and um, then I'll come back to you guys. Okay, so once you're done refining with your eraser tool, um, you know, go to view if you've um, enlarged your image or the view of it and hit fit on screen so you can see it. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, this is this is just a tutorial, you know, but hopefully after you learn this technique, you might be able to use it creatively um, when we start doing more, more things with digital imaging with your photography. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new document. So you're going to go to File, and you're going to press New, and it'll bring up a Contacts menu. The first thing you should do where it says Pixels, just to make it easier, is to change it to Inches. And then plug in whatever measurement your original document is. So like mine was like, I would resized it to 8, close to 8 by 8, so I'm going to change mine. I think I told you guys to do like 8 by 10. Um, and you can just, you can always double check what you did and, and, and make your new document. So, um, let me plug in 8 by 8. And then the resolution needs to be the same. So if you, for some reason, left it at 300, um, leave it at 300. I think I changed mine to 150. But the, the resolution does need to be the same. Um, so make sure you do that. And then you hit OK. And then you have a blank document, a blank piece of paper. Um, you have two image windows. So if you look up here, you can have more than one photo open in, in Photoshop. So this one is activated. So if I click on this bar, it brings back my original document. So you can sort of activate or go back and forth between them. So one tool we're going to be using is something called a gradient tool. It's probably hidden under your paint bucket tool. So if you, if you're paint bucket tool is visible. Click on the little arrow in the corner and there it is, gradient tool. So select that and if you look up here at your tool option bar, if you click on this little um, arrow here, there, there are different gradients that you can select. And then if you if you don't like this list, see there's there's these kind of like metal looking gradients you can click this little arrow here and select large list. Oops. Uh, yeah, large list is already selected. And then there are different, you can plug in different um, gradients, this, you know, like co color harmonies. So it will replace the set with a new one. I'm going to hit OK. And so now these are, these are different. These are more colorful. And, and basically the way the gradient tool works is um, you just take your pointer your um, and then drag it um, in the direction you want the gradient to go across the paper. And so it kind of creates this um, gradation between light and dark. If you don't like it, you can just keep doing it. Um, if you want to hit edit, step backwards. Um, or you can just keep dragging it over. And again, you can 
you know, go to your list and, and select different ones if you don't like that one. Let's see what this does. No, I don't, I don't like this. Um, that doesn't really have a lot of color. Um, but pick a, a background that you think will um, enhance your picture or, you know, complement your picture. Let me get back to the color harmonies. I'm going to try to find something like reddish and orange. So, you know, you can do it from the top, I mean, the bottom up, bottom to top. You know, you can you can do it from the side, you know, just depending on what direction you want the gradient to go in. Um, I'm going to leave it like this. All right, once you've done your gradient, we're going to create um, a new layer. So there are different ways to create a new layer. If you go over here to your layer palette, if you click this little um, icon at the bottom, it looks like a sheet of paper with a corner turned that will create an empty layer that you can put stuff in. You can also go up here to, to layer a new and then just layer. So it just really depends on, on you know, a lot of people like to use the icons. So either way, it'll create a new layer. So you want to make sure that layer is highlighted. So you can see here in my palette, um, you know, I don't, sometimes tools won't work, like you're trying to get something to work, and it might be that you're in the wrong layer. So, you know, please make sure that you're always sort of paying attention. So you do want this layer, layer one that you've created, to be highlighted. And we are going to use the paint bucket tool next. So go back to your gradient tool and you know, click the arrows and select the paint bucket tool. Okay, so sorry about this. Something happened in my recording and this, the figure, we're, this is eventually what we're going to do. We're going to move the figure into the background, but um, something happened in this recording, so we haven't gotten to that step yet. But just to show you how you can delete um, a layer, um, I'm going to do that right now and start back to where we left off originally. You highlight that layer and then you can either go to um, edit or no layer and then delete layer delete layer figure yes and so that layer is gone you can also drag it um, to this little trash can right here so originally um, where's my layer with noise okay so we've gotten, we've done the filter and the noise. Um, and let me see where we're at now. Okay, we have not done the filter and the noise. I'm so sorry. I tried to like go back. I'm using this screencast-o-matic to record and I thought I could easily edit and it's not as easy as I thought. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this layer as well and we'll get back on track. So here you can take it to the little trash can, boom, it's gone. So where we, where I think we left off last was the gradient. So now you want to select your paint bucket tool. Um, so remember the gradient and the paint bucket tool are probably hidden. You know, the, the gradient tool is probably what's visible and your paint bucket tool is hidden. So select that. Um, you also want to make sure that your color picker is set to black and white. Um, remember when we're using this, we click, sorry, we click on the foreground color and you can um, kind of go through and you know click on or mix a color and um, you hit OK and, and so that's the color um, that the foreground is and so any brush tool or painting or drawing tool that you pick would um, fill that color so select your um, paint bucket tool but we, we do want to make sure this is black and white so to reset it click um, this little icon next to this double curved arrow here and so that will reset it so the foreground is color is black and the background color is white make sure the paint bucket tool is selected and <laughs> I have totally um, messed this up so we had created a new layer before um, so if you already have a new layer don't do this but for some reason I had to delete that layer to start over so I'm going to quickly 
um, make one. Okay, so I paused it and um, put the layer that we needed, the empty layer that we needed. So you should have already done this. Um, I'm, again, I apologize. So take the paint bucket tool, make sure that layer one is selected, and then you're going to click um, in the document and fill it with black. Next, you're going to go to filter, and you're going to select, scroll down and select noise, and then you're going to select add noise. Um, and these are the measurements you want. Mine were already set. Um, you want the amount to be at 50%. You can either type in the number, you can move the slider, make sure uniform is um, clicked and that monochromatic is checked. And then hit OK. Next, you're going to go over to your layer palette where it says um, normal. This is called your blending mode. And we're going to blend um, these two layers together. Um, again, you can sort of hide layers um, just so you see that idea that they're, they're not one picture yet. They're just like layers of um, different adjustments on top of each other. So I'm going to go to normal and click the little arrow and I'm going to select I'm going to select um, something called linear dodge. You can try these other ones like screen, but basically they're like overlays. Um, but click linear dodge and that kind of blends those two layers together so that we see a little bit of the top layer, that texture we made with the, the bright colorful background that I made. Next, you want to go over next to your blending mode. Um, make sure it's set to linear dodge if you played with any of the other um, blending modes. And change the opacity to 40%. This is really cool. You can um, change the opacity of layers so that other layers show through each other. This is another way to do that. Um, you can move the slider. Um, or you can just type in the number. So you want to move it to about 40%. Okay, 41 is close enough. All right, so we've created this background. Now we're going to take that figure we selected earlier and move it into this um, background that we've created. So you should have both windows still open. Remember, you can click on these tabs and you can have more than one image open. So this is the figure that we selected earlier. I, I actually, because I messed up the recording, I went back and had to reselect it and do all those steps again. And this time, because her feet were covered by leaves, it looked like she was, like I had cut off her feet when I just moved the figure. So I actually incorporated part of the leaves. Um, and I think it will look nice against that background. So you can, you know, you can take liberties with how much you um, select and choose to drag into this picture. It'll look cool. Um, to see both images, and I have this other layer hidden, um, so to see both um, images at the same time, um, you want to go to Window, Arrange, and then I click Float All in Windows, and this allows me to see both um, window um, images um, simultaneously, and you can use your Move tool and, and move them around. Okay. So basically we want to move this figure that we selected into this background. So make sure this is activated, your figure window is activated. Hide um, that layer, the background layer, and make sure that that layer with just the figure that you copied into it is selected. And then you're going to grab your move tool and then just click and drag the figure over. And then you don't need this window anymore, so you can just close it. And if you want to save, I might save it, just because if you mess up like I did, you won't have to redo your selection, but I'm, I'm not going to save it right now. So now in our document that we created, we have three layers. Um, and you can see now that the figure um, made its own layer, so there, there are three. There's the background, there's the noise layer that we created, and then now we have a figure layer. And so whatever layer you have activated, you can move whatever it is. I'm going to kind of move this figure back into place. Um, you can see I didn't do a good job selecting the second time. <laughs> uh, sometimes when you have too many layers, it gets a little confusing. Um, when it says layer one, two, three, four, and you know, so you can rename these. So let's practice doing that. To rename a layer, you you click on the letters, double click, 
And so I'm going to rename this black layer the no like noise. That's where we added that noise or texture. And now I'm going to click on this layer and rename it figure. So that's something you might want to get in the habit of doing because you will be, when we start getting more into Photoshop, we are going to be working with more layers. And this will help kind of keep track of those. Okay, um, some other tools or adjustments I want to show you. Now, I resize my um, figure image in my new document the same size, and my figure fit pretty well. If for some reason your figure is too small or too large, I want to show you how to do Edit Transform. Um, so make sure your figure layer is activated and highlighted, and then go to Edit transform and scale and so this will allow you you can sort of tug on the corners so if you feel like I would do it from the corner so you don't mess up the proportions if you feel like your image is too little or you want to enlarge it or make it smaller um, this is how you do it um, so I'm just gonna leave mine where I might make it a little bigger well yeah and then to confirm the change you see this box this is called a bounding box you have to hit the enter key a lot of students will will change it, and then um, they and then they leave the bounding box and they try to do other things, and it won't work. It locks the computer. So make sure you hit the enter key. Again, if you don't like something, you can always hit edit step backwards. Um, something else you might want to play around with that's fun is um, edit, transform, and then distort uh, or warp. You know, you can play with any of these skew, distort, perspective, warp. I would try warp. And if you want to make your image a little bit more surreal, this, this warp feature sort of allows you by pulling on these points to sort of, um, you know, distort and warp the image, um, which can be kind of fun to play with. That's kind of funky. I might leave that. You don't have to do this, but I would, I want you to play around with it. Um, if you like how it looks, um, hit, you know, hit OK. If you don't, um, no, maybe that looks, I don't know. I'm going to leave it. You hit Enter, and then if you don't like what you did, just hit um, Edit, Step Backwards. Oops. If you like what you did, if you change your mind, you're like, oh no, I want to just hit Step Forward, and it will change it back, which is really, which is another cool thing about, about Photoshop. All right, so now we're going to create a new layer. So remember, there are different ways to do that. You can click on this little icon at the bottom of your layer palette. It's like a little sheet of paper with a corner turned. Or you can always go to Layer, New, and, and Select Layer. So they're very, there's like a million different ways to do the same thing in Photoshop. So make sure that layer is activated. Now we're going to use our brush tool. Um, we've used this before. It's, it's, you know, and there are different tools that look like brushes, but they're not. They're, there's something different. Like the quick selection actually looks like a brush with a pointed arrow, like point, like these little dotted lines. We just want the brush tool. So when you hover your mouse over it, make sure it says brush tool. So select that. Make sure, again, that your foreground and background color are, you know, black and white. Um, and then go up here to your brush tool and you have it highlighted here in the tool option bar and you, we want to change the size to something really small um, so one to three pixels um, it just depends on the resolution of your image but you want like little scribbly lines so I'm going to do like three okay that should be good um, and then you want to set the hardness at 100%. And again, make sure you're in that layer, that empty layer you created. And basically, you're going to kind of scribble over your picture. And you're like, oh my god, what is she doing? So you just kind of want to scribble over that figure and just kind of go in different directions. Um, also, I forgot to mention, go back up to the tool option bar and make sure opacity and flow are set to 100%. They probably are, but just in case. 
Um, and basically you're just going to really cover this with scribbles. So I'm going to pause it and, and do some more. All right, so, you know, get it to this point. It might take you a little bit of time. And again, you can, you can do different directions. You can do like circular scribbles. You can do zigzags. All right, so once you have enough scribbles, we're going to scribble some more, but this is enough um, so you understand the effect we're going for. Um, you're going to take this layer. Let's rename it just to get in the habit of um, doing that. So where we've made these scribbles, just double click and rename it scribble. And again, just to kind of show you, you know, the layers, like basically these are just, you know, layers on top of each other. We haven't um, combined them yet, so we can easily get rid of these layers if we wanted to. Like if I didn't want the scribbles, I could just easily, you know, trash it. Um, we can also move these layers um, in different configurations. So I'm actually going to take the scribble layer and move it below the figure layer. And all you have to do is just click and drag it and release. So now the figure's on top, the scribble's on the bottom. Make sure the figure layer is highlighted now or activated. And then you're going to use your keyboard. You're going to hit Control Alt G. Okay? Um, and that creates something called a clipping mask. And so I think you can start to see what's going on now. So I'm going to go back. Wait. Oh, I'm just going to continue scribbling. Wait. Hold on. Let me figure out. All right. So you can kind of see where um, everywhere that I've scribbled, it's kind of showing... Um, the image and it's just you know it's revealing the image but only by the marks that I'm making and because I use such a low um, pixel or small pixel it, it looks like it's being drawn um, so now you want to go back to the scribble layer um, highlight that and then make sure you still have the the brush tool selected and that it's still set to three pixels and just keep scribbling and now instead of actual scribbles like you know you're you're getting the whatever you scribble is revealing the picture um, and that's why it's called a scribble and so it kind of I think it's a cool technique it, it kind of has this very painterly technique but it still looks like a photo um, and this will take some time you know to kind of color in um, so spend some time doing it. I'm going to pause it and get a little bit more of this done so you can see the finished product. All right, so I scribbled in a little bit more, and it's starting to, to come through a little bit better. Um, I'm going to pause it again just so you can see it in different stages. And here it is after a few more minutes of coloring. So it really does take a lot of like time to scribble it. And I know you're going to be tempted. You're going to be like, oh, well, I'll just increase my pixel size, don't do that because that's what makes it look cool. It's these very small strokes um, that you're using to reveal the figure. Otherwise, it will just it will look normal. So don't be tempted to change it. Um, so leave it at a, a very small pixel size. Um, and just, you know, continue to scribble. You guys should have an easier time because um, I'm doing this on a laptop and you know, with the mouse, I think it'd be a lot easier to, to move that. I'm using my little laptop um, little pad mouse that's on it. Um, and so the more you do it, and um, the more it'll kind of come through and be a little bit more vibrant. So it, it is the photo, but because you're using these really tiny scribbles, and so it, it really has a kind of more surreal painterly sort of effect um, don't worry about getting the black um, you know you can play around with that and make those edges look cool but you can also erase those too if you don't like your black edges like you think you know they um, if you want to get rid of those I'll show you how to do that all right so um, once you get it sort of filled in if you don't like your black marks. You might like how yours look, um, but you can always take the eraser tool and click on that. Again, you might need to adjust the size, and I would put it, I would make it a soft 
instead of the, and it probably already is set to zero, but double check and make sure the hardness is set to zero so it has more of a soft edge. And you can kind of, you know, get rid of the X, you know, the, the scribbles that are outside of the outline if, if you don't like how they look and, and make them blend in a little bit better so they're not quite as harsh. Um, but I think this is a really cool little tutorial that I think um, you could use with other um, techniques to really create an interesting image um, when you learn a little bit more about Photoshop. I like this tutorial too because it um, it shows a lot of different tools um, and I think you learn a lot about how to maneuver in Photoshop by doing this. Um, and then, you know, you create something cool and you're like, oh wow, Photoshop's not that hard. Um, and so you can kind of play around with it. And I'm going to get rid of these that I made here. And there you have. So now you know why it's called a scribble. So after you're, you're done and you get it to the point that you like how it looks, I do want you to save it. So remember to go to File, Save As and, um, you know, rename it, you know, Scribble. Um, I'm going to save it on my little external drive. And you do want to save it as a Photoshop file. Um, just, just leave it at Photoshop, hit OK, because um, we might add to this later. If you, so when we, when you save as, and it saves it as a Photoshop, file, it keeps all your layers intact so that when you open this, you, you still have all these layers and you can go back and edit some more. So don't change it to JPEG, you know, make sure it's saving as a Photoshop file. And then if you want to print this out, you, you know, send it to the printer, um, you know, file, print. Um, I can't select the inkjets because I'm not at school, um, but you would select one of the art color. Oh. Maybe it's going to let me inkjet, you know, go to print settings, um, depending on the size of your image, um, you know, make sure you change the paper size um, to photo series 8x10. If you do print this, I want you to print it small. I don't want you to print a huge um, picture. Hit OK. Mine's a square format, um, so, you know, I could have it horizontal or vertical. Um, again, it depends. If your picture's horizontal or vertical, make sure that you've, you know, selected the right layout. And again, you can always change the size too by using the scale feature down here. So if you want it a little bit smaller without having to go back and resize the picture, you can um, type in, like I might type in 85%, and then you hit print. Um, so I, I would like every I think I would like everyone to print theirs out and put it in their portfolio. And again, save the save as and save it as a Photoshop um, so that you have your layers intact in case we want to add to this layer layer later. All right, thanks for your attention, and um, I'll talk to you soon with our next Photoshop tutorial. Bye.